Welcome to the channel. My name is Matthias. Today we're going to talk about a pretty bad tie-in into the King of Black crossover. The story is called The Sword and the Spirit. It takes place in a five-part miniseries called Symbiote Spider-Man King in Black. Surprisingly, it's written by Peter David. And I have to say that even though I'm a big fan of his work, this particular story, it's not good at all. And we have art by Greg Land that at moments it looks fantastic. And at other moments it feels a little bit weird and off. Personally, I'm pretty familiar with his work, and in this story, he's pretty much shameless how much he steals from himself. It seems he has issues drawing kids, like the story starts off with this young kid that you're not sure if he's 10 years old or 5 years old. He's sort of all over the place. And there's one thing that really gets on my nerves when I read this story is that everything revolves around Black Knight's Ebony Blade. The artist seems to have a real hard time with the scale of the blade itself. Like, depending on who has the sword, it changes size. I am not sure if the Ebony Blade does this or not, but it looks really weird. So, as I mentioned previously, this is a tie-in into the King and Black crossover. And what happens here is that Null sends back a group of shadow agents trying to get their hands on the Ebony Blade and destroy it because it seems to be one of the very few weapons that can actually hurt Null. So it's pretty cool to see this angle that you see Noel trying to tie all these loose ends and try to mitigate any liability. It is also hinted in the story that Noel will take over the present and try to destroy all of reality going all the way back to the past and to be able to return to the nothingness where he was born in. So this story takes place back when Peter Parker was wearing the symbiote. He has the black costume. So it would be the 1980s era of Marvel, but due to Marvel's sliding timeline, I guess it's 2010. So it happens at the beginning of the story, Noel has sent back his agents, these shadow type symbiotes. They choose as their main host, Alistar Smith, who's an old school Spider-Man villain. He is tasked to find the Ebony Blade and destroy it, as I mentioned previously. So during this time, Alistar is actually a patient in the psychiatric hospital called Ravencroft. He has actually contacted the Daily Bugle because he wants to give an interview, spilling the beans on all the evil stuff that he's done in the past. So Ned Leeds is sent and Peter Parker goes as the photographer. So obviously when Peter and Ned arrive to Ravencroft, all hell breaks loose. So Alistar liberates his inner symbiote and he starts infecting other people and they become these underlings of this original shadow symbiote. He makes his move to escape Ravencroft when he's encountered by Spider-Man in the black costume. So here's something that really didn't work for me in this story, among many other things. We get a brief battle between Spider-Man and Alistar's symbiote who calls itself Mr. O. And my god, what a terrible name. But the thing is, Mr. O realizes that he's dealing with another symbiote. And he actually says to Spider-Man, why are you attacking me, brother? We're one and the same. And Spider-Man's costume does not react to this. I'm not sure what's the situation with the symbiote during this time. If it had any type of consciousness. Or it's keeping its consciousness secret so it doesn't react to Mr. O. It's not explained by the writer and it just feels a little bit sloppy. So what happens is Mr. O starts overpowering Spider-Man and he's saved just in the nick of time by Black Knight. He actually stabs Mr. O with his ebony blade. But he's able to escape and Spider-Man does not understand. He's like, Black Knight, where did you come from? How did you know you had to come here and help me? So Black Knight actually tells Spidey that he had a vision with Merlin, that he had to deal with this dark being that was going to appear during this time. While all this is going down, we have Kang the Conqueror kidnap the Watcher because he wants to download everything he has observed over the years. When he does this, the computer of his ship overloads and his whole spaceship, for some reason, explodes. He's left floating in outer space. He is picked up by old school Rocket Raccoon, who just happened to be around. And he tells him, we have to go to Earth. We have to stop the minions of Null. For some reason, he discovers this when he was downloading the information from the Watcher's mind. Then we cut to the Avengers Mansion where we have Black Knight talking to the ghost of Merlin or a manifestation of Merlin. 
where he explains to Mr. Whitman the importance of the ebony blade. And again, that's it's one of the few weapons that can actually hurt Null himself. But Black Knight realizes that there's some inconsistencies in the story. And he discovers that he's not talking to Merlin. It's just a shape-shifted Mr. O. Man, that name again. It's just so terrible. He's able to steal the ebony blade. He stabs Black Knight with it and makes a run for it. While all this is going down, Spider-Man is able to stop one of Mr. O's underlings that was gunning after J. Jonah Jameson, trying to kill him. And then we get this really weird disjointed moment that just doesn't make any sense. So Spider-Man swinging through the city after this whole encounter that he had. He sees a new Avengers Quintet that in an inner monologue we discover that can go into outer space. He's fascinated by this new model. So he's able to thwip his way onto the ship. He wants to convince Tony Stark because he thinks he's flying it. If he can take him on this test flight. And totally out of coincidence he discovers it's Mr. O. He's stolen this Quintet. He has the ebony blade with him. That is some very convenient and stupid writing. Peter David, you're killing me. You're one of my all-time favorite writers. You can't do this. We cut back to the Avengers Mansion where we have Kang who saves Black Knight from bleeding out on the carpet. He's with Rocket Raccoon. So Mr. O is able to kick Spidey off the Quintet. He's rescued by Kang. We get a brief little battle between Spidey and Kang because obviously he knows he's a villain. Where Rocket Raccoon has to intervene. Where we have Spidey totally surprised that he's dealing with this anthropomorphic raccoon. Also, Kang has captured one of Mr. O's minions. And when he's able to get the symbiote off this person, we discover it's Monica Rambeau. Captain Marvel? What an incredible coincidence. We have such a heavy-hitting character on board. When she wakes up, she also freaks out because she sees Kang. We sort of go through the same song and dance that happened with Spidey. So now we have this motley crew of characters that want to stop Mr. O from destroying the Ebony Blade. Rocket Raccoon actually tells him, look, there's only one place in all the galaxy where you're going to find a person that can destroy that weapon. It's on nowhere. And we discover that the character that possibly can destroy this weapon is this female as Guardian Troll. She's like a refugee there. We cut to Mr. O arriving and requiring her services when out of nowhere... Ulik the troll arrives. It seems that this female troll is Ulik's sister. And he has a ritual obligation in killing her. That's why she's a refugee on Nowhere. Again, this story is a mess. The thing is, Mr. O, pieces out. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this battle. Then we have Cosmo the dog intervening in this whole situation. And on top of this, we have Spider-Man and company arriving where Spider-Man declares that he has his own Guardians of the Galaxy team. When I actually read that line, I thought to myself, I'm done with this story. This is terrible. This is not for me. And obviously, our heroes plus villain are able to stop Mr. O. He gets captured. He's actually given to the Collector. Even the Watcher intervenes in this whole situation. So he seems to be another member of... But the thing is, we still have one issue left. So what happens is, Mr. O escapes. All our heroes battle him again. They defeat him again. And that's the end to this very sloppy and poorly written story. Again, it just breaks my heart to see something so bad from Peter David. He has done bad stories in the past, but this one just goes on and on. And every time he tries to do something interesting, it just makes it worse. So I'm leaving this video here. Hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.